Hey everybody, James here with Modal Electronics. Hope your summer was good. Mine was all right. I was doing a lot of production, a lot of sound design, a little bit of sun, but I tend to like synthesizers better. Um, today's going to be a lot of fun. We're back at it. I'm going to be doing um, argon and cobalt together. I'm going to be creating a cohesive kind of singular patch with both of them. We're going to be using stuff like Mod Wheel and Aftertouch, and they're going to be reacting together. And I'm going to just show you how yin and yang these two really are, and uh, why if you only have one, you should be getting the other. All right, let's dive in. Okay, before I show you the first example, just want to cover one question that you might be asking. Why not just do this with one modal synth and a VST or another hardware synth? The answer is because it's a lot faster doing it with two modal synthesizers and it's a lot more fun. And they also share common parameters like drift, width, that sort of thing. Uh, and then they also complement one another. So these are two completely different personalities, and I think they're almost like yin and yang, and, and I just keep going back, back to that analogy. Now, there's a couple of different ways of blending them together, and that is really uh, kind of the big takeaway from this, is the, the way you approach blending these together as though they are one synthesizer. So the first method I'm going to show you is kind of like juxtaposed, as I would call it, or um, uh, you know, opposing, which means they're contrasting one another, but at the same time, they're kind of calling in response. So they're together, but they're different. <laughs> and then after that, I'm going to show you the other method, which is more common, which is like the mix method, um, where they are kind of one cohesive sound. And then, of course, there's um, going to be an example where it's kind of a hodgepodge of both, where there's a little bit of contrasting um, in one part, but if you modulate it, then it'll become together or, and vice versa. So let's get to it. I'll show you the first example. I wanted to show you first what I did to make them kind of opposed to one another. So uh, the trick here is using LFOs. So the LFOs are uh, modulating the amp envelope sustain. So LFO 1 is doing um, half notes here. And then over here, it's doing um, quarter notes with LFO 2 right there with the sustain. And there's a lot of other things going on. You can all try these out, um, you know, after you're done watching this video and uh, hopefully have some just as much fun as I did. Another cool thing about this riff is that um, you have the cobalt coming in on two and four, but if you keep playing notes before you hold down, you know, for two quarter notes or a half note, um, it's not going to come in. So you can do these riffs where you'll just hear it once pop in like this. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? All right, let's uh, let's try a different example here. So the next example is going to show you how you can be productive and kind of have two parts already being written at the same time. So for one of them, I have a riff; it's uh, dotted eighth notes, and then for the other one, I have this sort of um, these kind of mellow keys or pad. They're like pad keys. They just have a they have a sharper attack than than a normal pad. So 
So that one's taking advantage of the Argon 8's kind of unique sound and using a couple of wavetables like that. And, and then the Cobalt 8 is doing dotted eighth notes like so. And just like the other example, um, when, when I press aftertouch, the filters are going to be lifting on both of them. And uh, yeah, there's all sorts of different modulations you can do. Um, that's a common one that's built in right here on the app, you'll see. So right here, these are the fixed routings. Um, and one my favorite ones to use are these uh, Y plus to LFO one depth and then an aftertouch to cut off. So let's hear how these sound together. So as you can see, there's a lot going on here. The Cobalt 8 is doing riffs using these LFOs, cut off uh, being modulated by LFO 3 as well as LFO 2, both polyphonic LFOs. And so if you start playing different rhythmic variations, you're going to be hearing all sorts of crazy patterns and um, intricacies and kind of polyrhythms. Like so. And then we have the Argon 8X just backing it up. Um, with very nice, mellow, kind of uh, moody um, wavetable keys. And then of course, Aftertouch is bringing up the filter and giving them those, those cat meows, those meows. Okay, for this last example, I'm going to be showing you how a cohesive sound can be kind of broken apart and become two different sounds. They're not necessarily opposing one another, but they're definitely um, going off into different directions and kind of um, just doing different things. The Argon 8 is going to be doing some crazy stuff with its Wavetable uh, 2. Now, Wavetable 2 is set to clocked noise, and if you don't know what that sounds like, um, you're about to find out. It's pretty neat. Um, and then the Cobalt 8 is going to be doing some uh, sort of drifting um, and melodic uh, detuning um, not necessarily melodic, actually. It's just going to sound kind of eerie. It's going to be bending notes. Uh, and for this one specifically, I set up Argon 8 so that it would not pitch bend. Well, while well, I'm doing that right now, actually. I'm setting up Argon 8 so it does not pitch bend, but I want Cobalt 8 to pitch bend by a full octave. And that's going to come into play when I start pushing X plus and X minus. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, I'm going to play the parts individually here so you can hear them. There's Cobalt 8, pretty, pretty, pretty low-key bass. Here's Argon. All right, let's put them together now. One, of course, filling up the width, uh, the wide image, and that's the Cobalt. The Argon 8 is a little bit narrower. It still has some width to it, but it's much narrower. All right, I'm going to start pushing the joystick here and adding drum elements. Kind of build. Just the cobalt. All 
right, here's just the Argon. Here's what I here's the clock noise I was talking about. coming in. Can you hear that detuning from the cobalt? That mow, 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 mow. <laughs> Let's kick in some i hats, build up the intensity here. As you can see, these things go nuts. Um, you can really get some crazy stuff going on. Why don't I just show you one or two things that were happening? So I decided to focus on the mod joystick for this one. Rather than splitting up to aftertouch and all sorts of different modulation parameters, I wanted a lot of stuff to happen with one modulation parameter. So Y plus obviously made sense. So this cranks up the FX level. And in addition to that, it cranks up the modulation depth, and we have the mod envelope altering the mix. And every time a note's triggered, it's a quick decay transient, and it cues in the mix. It pops over to the opposite side, so that would push the mix over here, and we get a, that's how we get that clock noise sound. So once again, I'll play that as an example here. Now, if I made a longer decay, then you'd hear more of it. And the random kind of um, sporadic clocked noise tones that you're hearing is courtesy of the sample and hold LFO. It doesn't actually have to be in one quarter note. It's actually supposed to be in one eighth. I don't know why it was in one, one quarter T. Oh, well. Um, it's courtesy of these LFO-1 uh, doing the sample and hold shape. You can doesn't matter really which one you pick. Um, and it has to be in retrig. So LFO-1 to wavetable 2, that's going to be moving it around all different directions. So as you can see, these, these things are, are, are really cool when you use them together. They're like yin and yang. Um, and it's even more fun when you have modulations that pull them apart and have them form their own identity. That way they're kind of playing together, you know, as buddies. And then all of a sudden they just start doing some crazy stuff. It's like seeing two people, um, you know, dancing in unison and then they break off into, you know, break dance solo, break dance fighting or something. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's tons of fun to be had. You can download these, uh, just check the description or check back on our Facebook page. Uh, and if you make your own versions of these, by all means, share them with the group, uh, join our Facebook group, the, uh, Argon 8 group and the, uh, Cobalt 8 group or the modal synthesizers group. There's quite a few of them on Facebook, actually, but uh, we, we're in all of them. And uh, yeah, I think you're just going to have a blast. And you know, if you only have one, but not the other, now's the time to go look. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. 
Um, share this video with friends if you think it's uh, worth sharing. And also check modalelectronics.com. We've been making additions to the website. So if you have a cobalt or an argon, there's new sounds for you to go check out and download. Um, we have an entire page dedicated to uh, preset packs now. And of course, sign up for a monthly newsletter. It has been a pleasure, and I will see you on the next video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.